Hi guys, it's Anakriti and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, we are going to be answering your most asked questions about me. I put a poll on my YouTube community page and almost 60% of you guys wanted to watch a get to know me video my subscribers i know that 80 percent of you guys are not subscribed to me so what are you waiting for like click the subscribe button so that you guys can vote for the kind of videos that you want to see but anyways 60 percent of you guys voted for a get to know me video so here i am filming that and i will be asked answering all of the questions that you guys sent me on my instagram page so first things first let's start with my background so my name is Anukriti Mukherjee and you guys can tell that I'm Bengali. So my dad is a Bengali and my mom is Punjabi. So I'm half Punjabi, half Bengali and I am basically a biomedical engineer. I did my B.Tech, my bachelor's in technology from VIT University, Vellore. I did it in biomedical engineering, which is basically like medical electronics. It's a specialization under ECE, which is electronics and communication engineering. I was working for two years with an IT company called Cognizant. Um, I was working in their life sciences department. I was basically a data analyst for pharmaceutical companies. Since I'm a biomedical engineer, they needed somebody to sort of understand the lab data of those big medical companies. So I was working for the pharma clients of Cognizant back in India. I did that for almost two years and now I'm here for my masters. So that brings me to the most asked question on my channel, which is what university am I studying in here in Canada? What's my course? What's my fee? All of that. So let's get into that. So I'm studying my master's in engineering in ECE, electronics and computer engineering here at Concordia University. Concordia University is one of the biggest universities in Montreal and in Con Canada in general. So I'm studying here. It's a two year program. Um, it's a professional program. So I have an internship in that. It's not a compulsory co-op. It's just that I have the option of doing an internship instead of nine credits of coursework so why i chose masters of engineering instead of masters of applied science is because uh, masters of applied science which is masc usually has a thesis attached to it and i did not want to go for a thesis based course i wanted to go for a internship based course and a project based course because that is what I feel is more important if you want to go into the practical R&D sector of engineering. If you want to go uh, into the academic side, like if you want to be a professor or something like that, then MASC is also a really good option uh, because you can do your PhD after your MASC. But normally, M Engineering is the last course you do after your BTEC. If you guys want to pursue PhD, then instead of M Engineering, you should go for a PhD based program. But I don't want to do my PhD, so I came for M Engineering. And also, M Engineering is a 45 credit program and MASC is a 60 credit based program so you have more labs and it is a little bit more time consuming and more hectic than M engineering for sure and the fees also for MASC is higher than M engineering since the number of credits is higher for MASC. So coming to the fees of Concordia University, it is one of the major reasons why I chose Concordia University over all the other universities that I got admitted into. It was the cheapest university to be honest because education in Canada can be really expensive, especially masters from reputed universities. So all the universities that I got into uh, among those Concordia was the cheapest. I wouldn't say cheap, honestly, <laughs> but economic i guess most economical out of all the other universities so my fees for concordia for two years is twenty eight thousand um, dollars for one year it's fourteen thousand dollars for two years it's twenty eight thousand um, but i guess you could do it for lesser or more honestly because it depends on the number of subjects you take the number of credits because each subject has a certain fees a certain tuition fee that you have to pay for it so yeah 
for concordia university roughly you will be paying around 30k if you're coming for masters of engineering if you're coming for masters of applied science then it is definitely a lot more i think one of my friends is studying in masc and her tuition is around forty-eight thousand dollars for two years because the number of credits are more as i said it totally depends on the number of credits you take each semester like this semester i have nine credits and i paid eight thousand dollar intuition fee and other than that you also have to buy health insurance here in canada and normally if you come as a student your university buys it for you uh, so you have to pay your health insurance as well and other than that in the first semester that you come there are a lot of other fees that they take as well like administrative fees and all of that which is just for one term but yeah um roughly for m engineering it will cost you thirty thousand dollars at concordia university i will also tell you guys about university of ottawa university of ottawa was another university that i was really strongly considering that was sixty thousand dollars for two years of same masters in engineering so almost double and um, the other university that I got into was UBC University of British Columbia and that costed that was costing me around $22,000 for one year that was a one year course now I know a lot of you guys might be wondering why I chose Concordia University if I got into UBC well that's another topic that I want to make a whole video on basically guiding you guys on how to choose the right university for you just because a university is really good and it has one of the best reputations does not mean it's the right university for you uh, it's a very subjective thing it's a very personal thing so i want to make a whole video on how i chose the right university for myself what are some of the criteria that you guys should also think about when you choose university so yeah, that's my university course and fee that you guys really wanted to know. Now coming to my IELTS score. So I gave my IELTS exam in August. I gave it on 30th August, I remember. Um, I got an 8.5 band overall. I don't remember the individual band. I think I got a 9 in reading, 9 in listening. No, I think I got 8.5 in reading, 9 in listening eight in writing and eight in speaking so overall overall i got 8.5 band and i prepared for ielts only uh, one month in advance not even one month like i started studying in august and i gave the exam in august so how i prepared for ielts is that for my speaking i used to practice the youtube tutorials or youtube videos that you can find on um like I guess showing people what a 8.5 band speaker sounds like, what a 9 band speaker sounds like and what I used to do was I used to play those videos and uh, stop them uh, once the question was over and then try to answer myself and after answering for my like after answering myself I would play and hear what the actual answer should be like like what like how a 9 band person would answer it, how an 8.5 band person would answer it. So that's how I prepared for speaking and listening, reading, writing. I just, um, I bought a book for, I think it was called Barron's IELTS exam. And I practiced my listening from the listening modules that they give in their CD and writing and reading. I just practiced on uh, using the exercise in, given in the book. So that's all I did. I think IELTS also depends a lot upon ki aapki actual mein English kaisi hai already because I feel like uh, agar aapko English seekhni hai uh, from scratch or fill IELTS dena hai to you need to prepare for at least three to four months because you're learning a completely new language agar aapko nahi aati to to ek nahi language mein fluency lane ke liye at least two to three months lagte hai but I was already fluent in English so I just basically had to practice and other than that my overall profile to get into uh, Concordia University was that I was a 9 CGPA holder for my BTEC. I graduated with a 9.1 and I had two years of work experience in IT plus I had already done a lot of projects in my 
university level because uh, I was basically doing medical electronics which is a specialization of ECE so most of my projects were electronics based uh, my internship was in a hospital where I worked on biomedical instruments so that that was my overall profile so someone asked me on Instagram how I convinced my family and how many people are there in my family uh, to come to Canada. So there are only four people in my ca uh, family. It's my mom, dad, me and my elder sister. So I didn't really have to convince anyone because it was kind of like my childhood dream to come and like study abroad and my whole family knew about it shuru se it was just a matter of deciding ki should i come for undergraduate or masters so i didn't want to come for undergraduate because actually i couldn't come for undergraduate because for the longest time till 12th almost ending ka i had decided ki main medicine karungi and I was preparing also for medical and I gave all the medical exams as well but last moment pe, like I'm 2016 batch so they had decided to do NEET and they cancelled all the exams that I gave and cleared so I decided that I don't medicine nahi karni hai. so I just gave essay randomly VIT my dad said that I don't medicine nahi karni hai, to aur kya karna hai. so I gave entrances for biotechnology and biomedical engineering and I got uh, biomedical engineering in VIT I didn't want to come for my undergraduate honestly because uh, I had taken science and whether I would do engineering or medicine it would be a 4-5 to five year course and that would be really expensive so I had decided early on that I will come for my masters. So once I finish, finished undergrad, uh, I basically had to decide whether I wanted to work more and or whether I wanted to study. So I worked for two years and now I feel like you should have some work experience before you come here because only when you actually work and you have work experience in your field you realize what you like and masters is more of a specialization course so you need to know what you like and what you don't like in order to know what you want to do for the specialization in so i would recommend that if you guys are coming for masters definitely try to get at least one year of work experience so you know how the industry works how the field works just mein aapko kaam karna hai and uski job opportunities kaisi hai in india like when i actually sat for my placements i realized that for biomedical engineers if you want to work in the r and d for medical electronics ki company they want electronics engineers they don't want biomedical engineers like I sat for the placements, I tried off campus as well and the package that they give in India for biomedical freshers compared to electronics engineers is very very less like um, it doesn't make sense for you to start your career at such a low pay scale so yeah that is when I realized that I need a further degree th uh, that says electronics on it so that I can work for these companies so make sure you have some sort of industry experience you know the industry in the country that you're going to for masters like it, uh, Canada mein job opportunities kya hai yeah india mein job opportunities kya hai so based on that you should decide your master's program that's what i did so the next question i got on my instagram was am i planning to settle down in canada or am i here just for studies so honestly i think you need to decide this um answer before you even come to Canada because you should choose your program based on that and I had it very clear in my mind that I want to settle down here I want to pursue job opportunities here I mean what happens in the future um, is like uncertain very uncertain you can't really predict it but um, in terms of my goals I do want to get a Canada PR and I do want to work here so when you study for two years here in Canada a master's course then you get three years ka work permit and after working for one year you can apply for PR so I wanted to work for a year or two and I wanted to see how I like it if you guys want to only come here for studies and you're sure that you want to go to India so it doesn't really matter whether you come for a one year course or a two year course just go for uh, try to go for the best university i want to settle down here in canada but obviously the future is uncertain so fingers crossed let's see what happens you guys will be with me through the, throughout the whole journey and you will see what happens so let's see what the future has together 
so another important question that i keep getting from you guys is regarding accommodation so i want to make a complete uh, video on how to find accommodations in canada but to give you a brief idea about how i got mine is um, basically i live in montreal which is a very student friendly city so yahan pe mostly jo ghar hai wo har apartment mein aapko ek do flats to aise mil hi jayenge jo for rent aise board laga hota hai jinme but i would advise that if you are trying to find a house uh, it is always better if you go to the city and then try to find the house like come to canada and then try to find a house in your city it is much easier most of the places are always on rent like her apartment building mein aapko apartments milenge rent pe and i found a 3 bhk house i'm sharing my house with like my apartment with four people it's four of us in a 3 bhk it's two girls and two boys and my rent for a 3 bhk is 1895 so i am paying for my room around 500 dollars like i give 475 and along with that we have to pay for our wifi and our gas that's it everything else is included in the rent so gas ka expenditure is very less it comes out to be like 5 or 6 dollars per person for one month and uh, hot water and heating is included in my rent and even electricity uh, we have to pay and even that's very less it's like 7 8 dollars for the whole month which split like five people uh, four people mein split ho ke 2 dollar ke kareeb padta hai so that's pretty cheap the only major expenditure in our house other than um, the rent is wifi we have video ट्रॉन का वाईफाई विच इज अनलिमिटेड वाईफाई एंड इट गिवस अराउंड थ्री या फोर हंड्रेड फिफ्टी एम बी पी एस सो दैट इज ट्वेंटी डॉलर पर पर्सन इट्स अराउंड एटी डॉलर का बिल आता है फॉर वन मंथ सो या अप्रोक्सीमेटली इंक्लूडिंग एवरी थिंग आई पे एग्जैक्टली फाइव हंड्रेड डॉलर इन टर्म्स ऑफ रेंट फॉर माई हाउस लाइक रेंट प्लस वाई फाई प्लस गैस इलेक्ट्रिसिटी सब मिला के इट्स अराउंड फाइव हंड्रेड डॉलर विच आई थिंक इज प्रिटी चीप बिकॉज not cheap but it's actually really good for the quality of the house that we have like it's freshly renovated and it's a very very spacious house like i love my room it has a balcony i also found this dresser that you guys can see i found a table uh, along with the house so uh, i will do a full house tour for you guys but i have gotten a really good deal for 500 dollars or montreal relatively in terms of rent is much cheaper than other places like if you go to vancouver or even toronto and all uh, one private room will cost you around 600 650 sometimes even 700 dollars i think the kind of spacious room i have if you guys see my room like when you guys see my room that uh, will easily cost you 700 dollars in a bigger city so i'm really happy uh, with the house that we got definitely don't pay anyone or online anything any rental company kisi ko bhi don't give any money unless you are here in canada because i almost got scammed there was a agent that was showing us the house and i almost like sent him almost a thousand dollars and thankfully i didn't my friend reached here before i did any sort of payment and i got saved so don't don't come into chai kitna bhi insaan genuine lag raha ho aapko don't pay any money to anybody because आप घर का रेंट दोगे इट विल नॉट बी लेस देन थाउजेंड और फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड डॉलर इट्स अ बिग अमाउंट इन आई एन आर सो डोंट डू दैट कम टू कैनेडा एक एक हफ्ते का या फाइव डेज का भी अगर आप एयर बी एन बी बुक करा लोगे नॉट इवन फाइव डेज थ्री फोर डेज बिकॉज यू विल फाइंड द हाउस विद इन टू थ्री डेज फॉर श्योर एंड जब तक आपको लीज मिलेगी एंड यू कैन मूव इन इट विल टेक यू अनदर वन और टू डेज सो आई वुड रिकमेंड की फाइव डेज तक का एयर बी एन बी यू कैन बुक इफ यूर कमिंग फर्स्ट इफ यूर कमिंग इन अ ग्रुप एंड आपसे पहले कोई और हो रहा है तो दैट इज इवन मोर बेनिफिशियल बिकॉज दैट इज वॉट हैपन टू मी सो या दैट इज हाउ आई फाउंड माई हाउस माई फ्रेंड केम टू कैनेडा एंड ही लुकड अप houses on kijiji and other platforms that i will share with you guys in my next video so yeah if you guys like this video and if you have any more questions then definitely let me know put them in the comment section i will make a part 2 of this if there are enough questions if you like this video make sure you like share and subscribe and i'll see you next time